Okay, so we're going to dive right in on lattice enthalpy or delta H lat. Now, this concerns salts. It concerns ionic substances and the enthalpy changes that are associated with them. So what do I mean by lattice enthalpy? Well, it's a measure of the strength of the forces between the ions in an ionic lattice. So of course an ionic lattice is made up of positives and negatives and the electrostatic attractions between them. Now delta H lat is a measure of the strength of those electrostatic attractions. So for example, in a salt, you know, we've got lots of positive ions and of course lots of negative ions. Now the electrostatic force between those can be measured. Okay, so these are electrostatic attractions. Now, of course, it varies between salt to salt, okay? So what we can say is that the stronger the force is, the greater the delta H lat, or the greater the lattice enthalpy. So the more attracted they are, the more difficult it's going to be to actually break those electrostatic attractions, okay? The more attracted they are, the more energy is going to be released when those two positive and negative ions come together, okay? So like all enthalpy, we're looking at equal and opposite. Now, like all enthalpies, there's an associated equation. So we're going to look at sodium chloride, okay? It's the salt, it's the go-to salt for every kind of example that we look at here, okay? So the first thing is we're going to look at the uh, lattice breaking or lattice dissociation. So what I'm going to do for short, I'm going to call that delta H lat dis. Okay, so that's the dissociation. So the breaking apart of the electrostatic attractions. So let's start with some sodium chloride. Okay, so NaCl solid. So we've got our salt in its standard state. Now to break that lattice completely, we need to separate every single sodium ion and every single chloride ion. We essentially need to vaporize it completely. And that word vaporize is really important because the lattice dissociation is defined as when you take your salt in its, or ionic substance in its uh, standard state, and you produce gaseous ions. So we've got Na plus gas, so they're all separated. And of course, Cl minus gas as well. So we completely obliterate this salt into its separate ions in the gaseous state. Now, of course, this is a massively endothermic process. It's going to take a lot of energy to do that. Okay. So that's our lattice dissociation or breaking. So dissociate this lattice into its initial ions. Of course, on the flip side of things, we've got our delta H lattice association or formation, so bringing it together, the opposite of what we've just looked at. Of course, some of you may have seen this come in. I'm going to call this delta H lat ass. Okay, so I'm going to, it's a lat ass for association, bringing our salt together. And it is literally the opposite of what we've got here. We take our gaseous ions that we uh, previously produced, maybe, and Cl minus gas and they come together to actually form our salt or ionic substance in its standard state. Now, of course, when these two ions come together, what happens is they release energy. So this is a massively exothermic process, releasing loads and loads of energy, okay? So for example, equal and opposite, as I said, this requires, this lattice dissociation actually requires an input of 787 kilojoules per mole for sodium chloride. Actually, when sodium chloride forms from its gaseous ions, that's minus 787 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so the equal and opposite, like we've come to expect, for delta H. So that's just for sodium chloride. These terms you can use for any salt, of course, okay? But these are our values for sodium chloride. 
So we've got lots of different salts. We've got group two and group six that can come together, group two and group seven, group one and group six, lots of different combinations of salts. So what is it that affects the size of this lattice enthalpy? So factors affecting delta H lattice enthalpy. Well, the first thing, really, really importantly, is the charge on the ions. What I mean by that is that the higher the charge on the ion, the stronger the force. Of course, two plus ion and a two minus ion are gonna be more attracted to each other than a one plus and a one minus, okay? So we need to take that into account. But there's something else, the ionic radius, okay? Because of course the charge on the ions are you know, affected by the size of the ion itself as well, okay? And of course shielding, especially when it comes to positive ions, the more shielding, the less the effective charge. So what I mean here is, the smaller the radius, the stronger the force, okay? So it's the combination of these two things that actually dictate the size of the lattice enthalpy. So overall, what we're saying is, the smaller and more highly charged the ions, the greater delta H lattice, okay? What we're looking for here is a high charge density. So if you've got a high charge in a small space, the charge density is really, really high. If you've got a small charge in a big space, the, the charge density is very, very small. For example, last thing. As you go down group one, what we see is a decrease in lattice enthalpy. Why? Because all these are one plus. The charge doesn't change, but the atoms are getting bigger. The ionic radius is getting bigger, okay? Which lowers the charge density, which lowers the delta H lattice. On the flip side of things, magnesium sulfide has got a massive delta H lattice. Why? Because that's two plus and two minus, okay? So you can see the massive difference that the size of the charge makes to the size of the delta H lattice. So what I would say is definitely know your definition, okay? So measure the strength of the forces between the ions in an ionic lattice, and we're talking about these electrostatic attractions. We've got lattice dis, okay? Which is the breaking of that uh, salt in its standard form, to actually produce gaseous ions. The opposite, the lat ass, is where you take those gaseous ions and bring them together. And of course, we need to understand these factors affecting delta H lattice. And you almost predict which one's higher than the other based on charge density. So they do love questions like that in the exam. This is gonna come in very useful for the Bourne Harbor cycle. So make sure that you know this, that you understand what these things are, before you start looking at those Bourne Harbor Cycle tutorials, okay?